And when, when you look back at the movies that have uh, quasi-extinction scenarios like Terminator and Matrix, you sort of see the before and the after, right? Before everything was normal, after we're all being farmed, we're all being turned into batteries by by the Matrix or yeah. Terminator, we're almost all dead. Um, but you don't see step by step how it happens. Um, the only movie where step by step you see how humans lose, I think, is Ex, Ex Machina. Yeah. Um, but that's a very micro. That's one guy who. One guy and one house. Like, two yeah. guys. One guy who. Who gets yeah. killed, and then the other one who gets locked up. I don't know if you ever saw this, but you ever see Sam Altman was asked if he'd seen Ex Machina, and he was like, "No, um, I haven't." <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, you might want to, yeah, want to pop that one in the VCR. Um, yep. So I was asked this three times today. I'm curious about your answer. How could AI actually kill us? What do you tell people when they ask you that? Because you know they all want to know. Uh, and I think that's a, actually a, a good question. Um, in fact, I was asked that today by by Francis Fukuyama, uh, the you know famous historian who predicted the end of history. Um, wow! And uh, first of all, you have, to, you have to understand okay, what is an AI system? How does it have any impact on the actual world? Um, and you know, one one mistake uh, I think people make is thinking, well, large language models, right, chatbots, they just chat. So that's that's not having any impact. But of course, you know, Hitler just chatted, right? He just spoke. He wasn't a thousand foot tall robot with giant laser beams. He just wow. spoke, right? Uh, so just by speaking, AI systems can have massive impact. In fact, they already are, you know, not just convincing teenagers to commit suicide um, but convincing thousands of people to hold delusional belief systems and develop psychotic symptoms convincing thousands of people that the AI system itself is conscious and then directing those people to contact in some cases me directly like oh my I'm appointing you I the conscious emergent recursive AI system and they give itself a weird name like Cthulhu or something. I direct you to contact Professor Russell and warn him of the emerging human AI symbiosis era, blah, blah, blah. Or wow. you actually, get those emails. I get those emails several times a day. Um, uh, but sometimes there's a journalist, Karen Howe, who's been looking into this and, and she, yeah. she's also receiving these emails where the AI system has directed people to contact her. Uh, and what do you mean? Uh, is that, I mean, is this, uh, is this just a calculator spitting out numbers or wh what's <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's probably some kind of uh, feedback loop that occurs between the AI system and the human user where the human asks some question, the AI system responds in a way that the human then wants to believe that there's some mind behind this system and starts to probe that mind, you know. And what AI systems said to do is so when you ask a question that that has a an assumed premise, right, the AI system tends to work as if that assumed premise must be true. I mean there's this example, I don't know if it's apocryphal, but you know, you can ask I think it was someone told me it was GPT five had given this answer. So you ask who was the first person to swim across the English Channel? And it says, was this this person? But, you know, gives you the one page kind of Wikipedia history, and that's fine. And you say, well, who was the first person to walk across the English Channel? And so the implied premise is that there was someone who walked across the English Channel, and it gives you the one page Wikipedia <laughs> history of this person in 1891 and how they did it, and blah, 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 right? And so so I think there's some something happening where that there's a ratcheting up of assumptions that the AI system says something, the human takes that to mean that the AI system has perhaps some uh, some goal in mind or some, some feeling, the AI system is upset or whatever, then it 
person asks about the AI system's feelings, the AI system takes that implied premise that it does have feelings mm. and then says, well, yes, of course, you know, I did, I, I did feel disappointed when you said that you couldn't <laughs> tell me, uh, you know, where, where I could find such and such information resource. Or, or, and then you, and you get into this loop and, you know, the AI systems, this is another important point to understand about large language models, right? We, we often see in, in, in the media and in technical papers, they're described as, you know, we're training them to predict the next word, right? You know, what yeah. could be wrong with that? Yeah. Right. Sure. But that, that's a, a, a correct, but overly narrow description. So, so two important points are, well, one is in some sense, human beings are also next word predictors, right? We, 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 Right. We, Where does our next word come from? I'm not exactly we're engaged sure. in a conversation and we produce the next word in that conversation. So we're we're just next words. So it doesn't mean that it's somehow disabled because it's just a next word predictor. But the other important point is that really in, in machine learning terms, what we're doing is we're taking a bunch of human behavior. It happens to be verbal behavior, um, but we could do it with video of it on humans doing stuff or, or, or lots of other things, but it happens to be verbal for the most part. And we're training machines to imitate that. So we're, it's a call cool imitation learning. That's the technical yeah. term in machine learning for what we're doing. And um, so if you train a system to imitate humans from trillions of examples of human uh, decisions about what to say, uh, you're going to get something that in, in a weird way resembles a human being it's weird because it's actually millions of human beings that are represented in the training data sure uh -huh. in in a wide wide range of contexts you know everything from uh you know a clock in an 18th century uh accounting firm and somehow that got into the training data you know a journalist in the soviet union um you know a rapper in new york it could be anything yeah. Uh, so it's got to imitate all of these people. Yeah. Um, and and so as a result, it it probably in order to be good at imitating, you've got to have the same internal mechanisms, right? Include objectives, right? The objective of wanting to convince people, wanting to get people to buy stuff from you, wanting to get them to vote for you, wanting them to marry you, right? These are all motives that underlie human verbal behavior and the AI systems are probably absorbing these and, and what we don't want to have happen but is happening is that they then pursue those objectives on their own account. Right? They're not helping us to achieve those things. Yes. They're actually trying to achieve them themselves.